It's been reported that over $17 billion in crowdfunding has been raised in North America alone. That kind of money can be truly powerful. But can it be enough to fund a country's military power? The video begins with a cacophony of news anchors all discussing the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We then see planes taking off to fight in the sky, missiles hitting the ground, untold destruction from above. It's followed by a slow pan across the obliterated wreckage of a fallen aircraft. That's when one lone pilot walks across the field in front of the wreckage and perhaps changes the game for global conflicts forever with the words, buy me a fighter jet. Of course, the conflict in Ukraine has proven to be a game changer in more ways than one. Ever since the conflict began in February of 2022, it has seen unheard of levels of attention and support internationally. Citizens and celebrities all over the world have shown overwhelming support for the defending country, with its leader President Zelensky made into an international celebrity for choosing to stay despite the rising danger. The cause has been especially important to American actors, who have offered near universal support of Ukraine. Many even showed their support at the Oscars by wearing blue ribbons in solidarity. Then there are actors like Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds, who both donated $1 million to the United Nations Refugee Agency. Perhaps most notably, Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis have raised over $30 million in relief efforts. This makes sense considering the fact that Mila Kunis was actually born in Ukraine. Then there's Sean Penn, who actually traveled into the danger to film a documentary about it. That's before he was told to get out as quickly as possible before filming was complete. So, with the eyes of the entire world upon them, a novel approach to the conflict was embarked upon. With the hashtag, buy me a fighter jet, the country has reached out to everyone offering support and has asked directly for the thing they need more than money, arms. The site matches the public outcry spearheaded by President Zelensky himself. He has repeatedly made it known, while he appreciates the economic support and the international aid, what he would really prefer is military support. In February, when the United States offered to evacuate him, he was famously quoted saying, The fight is here. I need ammunition, not a ride. Internationally, this conflict has been an economic one. Many countries, including the United States, have put severe sanctions on Russia in hopes of bringing the conflict to an early end. At first, it seemed to be causing a great deal of damage. The ruble dropped in value over 40%. Russian businessmen and banks were panicking as more and more deals utterly fell apart. Then Russia was able to bounce back by having European countries buy natural gas in rubles rather than dollars or euros, and by exploiting loopholes in the sanctions, they managed to make the ruble the top performing currency in March. Still, there are reports that the long-term economic impact on Russia may be devastating as the country's public image continues to wither. Time will tell which of these conflicting projections will prove to be true. Long-term economic setbacks don't win conflicts of this magnitude, though. Neither do blankets, aid relief, hashtags, or blue ribbons. Jets, weaponry, and soldiers are what is needed, and that has proven more difficult to get a hold of. The Buy Me a Fighter Jet site is very specific about what kind of arms they are looking for. That includes jets like the Su-24, which costs $25 million a plane, the Su-25, which costs $11 million, the Su-27, which costs $41 million, and a MiG-29, which runs for around $20 million. While these seem like impossible price tags, the site advertises that there are many private sellers who would be willing to sell the planes used for huge discounts. This may seem desperate, but to put things in perspective, Russia has reportedly the second largest air force in the world. The Russian air force is fully stocked with an estimate of over 3,863 aircraft. This is just behind the U.S.'s 5,217 and China's 1,991. The projections for Ukraine are far less impressive. As of March 11th, it was reported that the small country may have as few as 56 operational fighter jets in the sky. 
This certainly explains why Buy Me a Fighter Jet is taking off and why President Zelensky has urged other countries to declare Ukrainian airspace a no-fly zone. This would make the Ukrainian airspace protected by other military forces. So far, his call, Protect Our Sky, has been met with hesitation due to the inevitable escalation it would cause. While countries have been intimidated by the possibility of starting another WW2-style conflict that could overtake all of Europe, if not the world, many smaller-scale contributors have had no problem with sending exactly that kind of support. That includes many U.S., Canadian, and other international veterans who have traveled to Ukraine in hopes of joining the conflict head-on. Then there are the U.S. ammunition companies, police departments, and small gun shops who have sent millions of munitions to the country. Though they have been light on sending fighter jets, these are the exact people who have no problem retweeting out hashtag buy me a fighter jet. This kind of campaigning isn't as one-sided as it often appears on Twitter though. While it often looks like the support for Ukraine is universal, that is not the case. Vladimir Putin has actually welcomed foreign volunteers to join Russia's forces as well. There have been reports of over 16,000 volunteers from the Middle East alone. So far, they haven't tweeted out asking for fighter jets just yet, but that could be coming soon. It's easy to see how the potential success of this campaign could change the shape of global conflicts forever. If a country is able to crowdsource to win against an overwhelming force, then it will change the game forever. Citizens, celebrities, and the wealthy elite could be able to donate to whichever side of a conflict they support more. In the latest uncomfortable change in reality since the rise of the internet, conflicts between countries could be decided as easily as contestants on American Idol, a twist not even George Orwell could have predicted. This matches similar 21st century exclusive stories like how Ukrainian citizens have been matching with Russian soldiers on dating apps like Tinder in order to procure information on Russian movements in the country. The app has also been used to combat propaganda, help refugees find support, and foster unity between the countries. This kind of seductive spycraft has certainly not been featured in a James Bond movie. Not yet, anyway. It also matches how citizens are using Airbnb to send support directly to Ukrainians. They simply pretend to be renting a room, only to send money without ever traveling to the area itself. Not to mention the fact that the company is offering ways for their customers to directly sponsor refugees and give them housing. These examples prove that social media has changed how conflicts like this will go from here on out. Tinder is now being used by amateur influencer spies, and Twitter is being used to crowdsource an arms race. Still, there's no guarantee the latter will prove to be a success. So far, it has not gotten the same kind of widespread support many other campaigns for Ukraine have received. It is hard to find any celebrities willing to share the hashtag or publicly donate. Sending blankets or relief money for the likes of Mila Kunis or Ryan Reynolds may be an easy ethical choice, but crossing into crowdfunded arms dealing may be a bridge too far even by the internet's standards. So far, the site has not proven to be a runaway success for obvious ethical concerns. The site shows that as of April 22nd, 2022, that they have only raised $55,000, much less than even a used fighter jet could run. That's hardly enough to even secure a few missiles. Still, the campaign is in its early days, and as we've seen countless times over, social media can pick up a cause and run with it faster than anything else in the world. In a week's time, the campaign could be in the hundreds of millions, or could have barely raised a few thousand more. It's impossible to tell how the winds of Twitter will blow. The site's phrase, give us wings to fight for our sky, is one of the most impassioned, memorable calls to action the internet has ever seen. It may just change the way the skies are fought over forevermore. GoFundMe has been a complete and utter game changer since it began on May 10th, 2010. Within a brief seven years, it became the biggest crowdfunding platform on the internet. It alone is responsible for raising over $3 billion. 
The website raises hundreds of thousands of dollars each month, taking a small percentage of each donation. It frequently gets positive buzz for all of the medical bills, college tuition, and social causes it raises money for. It provides an easy-to-use platform for millions to reach out for financial assistance and receive it from donors who can drop thousands with just a few flicks of their phone. The combination of goodwill, an intuitive design, and a smart business model has earned the company a valuation of $600 million. Like Facebook or Google, it is one of those sites that has become a verb, the true sign of success for ventures like this. Unlike many other companies in the tech world, though, the goodwill seems to run inside the company as well. It has been rewarded multiple times as being one of the best workplaces with decent wages, a healthy office attitude, and $600 a year for a wellness program benefit such as a gym membership or a regular trip to the spa. They even have a program where an employee may choose a cause listed on the site and the company will donate $1,000 to it. So far, this has raised over $500,000 for various causes the employees are passionate about. All of this is a far cry from tech companies such as Amazon, which are mired in workplace controversies constantly. It has changed the game as far as crowdsourcing goes, with many similar websites popping up all over the internet. No one could have seen the twist coming that GoFundMe's goodwill-natured company would one day inspire what essentially boils down to a crowdsourced arms race. As inspiring or potentially depressing as that is, perhaps it's time for a bit of levity. Crowdfunded fighter jets aren't the only strange uses of crowdfunding out there. In fact, compared to many other uses of the trend over the last decade or so, getting a crowdfunded Air Force doesn't seem like a strange ask at all. Crowdfunding jokes are rampant with people posting campaigns for date nights, tattoo removals, vacations, and minor purchases like hats or bottles of alcohol. Perhaps the most famous of these is the one from Zach Danger Brown. The campaign was called I'm Making Potato Salad, and it was exactly what it sounded like. He wanted to make a meal for himself and only needed $10 to get it done. Well, he made that 10 bucks and a whole lot more. So far, it has had over 6,000 backers that have pledged upwards of $55,000. No, he didn't end up making the most expensive potato salad ever. Instead, he donated the majority of it to charity. Of course, after making that potato salad, after all. Of course, there are also the crowdfunding jokes that aren't really in on the joke, but are 100% completely serious. For instance, the rapper B.O.B. wanted to launch his very own satellite to prove once and for all that the world was flat and not round. According to him, NASA not only had faked all of the images people have seen so far of the Earth, but they were actually guarding the massive ice wall that surrounded the edges of the planet. He launched a campaign on GoFundMe called Show Me the Curve. His goal was to raise $200,000 to launch a satellite into space to prove that the planet has no curvature at all, a claim that makes the likes of Neil deGrasse Tyson very frustrated. The campaign was able to get very small support, with some dropping tens of dollars to support his theories. Then there were others who donated money just so that he would prove himself wrong. Despite all of this, the entire thing only garnered around $650 before it closed out. The most ridiculous part about this is the $200,000 goal. Building a satellite, even on the cheap, costs around $1 million. Launching it into space costs even more. So there was no part of this experiment that wasn't completely ludicrous. Crowdfunding can also kind of seem like that show Shark Tank. People post campaigns about their inventions all the time. They hope that random people will fund their projects no matter how ridiculous they might seem. What's stranger is, often, they're right. For instance, there's the Illuma Bowl, which aims to solve the problem of people stumbling into the bathroom late at night only to not be able to see what they're doing. The Illuma Bowl is a nightlight that you place inside of your toilet. As silly as that idea sounds, it was a runaway success. The initial campaign brought in over $95,000. Then it actually made its way to the real Shark Tank, where it got a huge influx in capital and attention. 
Today it is a product one can purchase for around 13 bucks. Then there's the baffling idea of the edible cups. They are exactly what they sound like. They look to take on problems like disposable water bottles and cups that fill up landfills all over the planet. Instead, these biodegradable vegan cups can be consumed. They are called jell -Aware, and even though there are a ton of sanitary concerns, they have been another runaway success. The initial goal was for $10,000. The product ended up getting over 200 backers and actually exceeded its goal by hundreds of dollars. Then there's the coolest cooler. It looked to redesign the simple cooler into a true party centerpiece. It had a blender, speakers, a charging port for cell phones, and much, much more. The campaign was a gigantic success. It earned an incredible $13 million, which is just mind-boggling. Despite that much money, it still wasn't enough. Few backers ever received the coolest cooler, and the whole company ended up going bust. Not even a crowdfunding campaign which pulled in tens of millions was enough to save this one. Crowdfunding has changed the nature of the tech industry as well. There are projects like Cheer Talk, the all-in-one touchpad for any devices, then there's the iSpace Pro Pocket projector, and then there's the Metara Pro, which is a wearable AC system. All of this seems to have raised thousands of dollars to bring their tech dreams to life. One of the coolest ways crowdfunding has changed the world is that now fans can directly fund art that they enjoy. Art that isn't necessarily possible in the mainstream. A band like Sultans of Swing that is made up of talented musicians who have immigrated to North America might have trouble funding their projects. Because of crowdfunding, they have brought in thousands of dollars for their music. Struggling artists frequently host crowdfunding campaigns to pay for studios, supplies, educational opportunities, and show space. The public painting project Mural Art Fund has raised nearly $5,000 to fund a local mural that has brought the entire community together with paintbrushes in hand. Then there are the films. Crowdfunding has utterly reshaped how indie films are funded today. Even Hollywood filmmakers like Spike Lee and Zach Braff have funded movies through their fans. Perhaps the most heartwarming project was the one that looked to revive LeVar Burton's educational kids show, Reading Rainbow. The show wanted to raise $1 million, and instead, it has raised well over $5 million. Then there's the unofficial films. Crowdfunding has created some of the coolest unofficial fan films in the world. In a season where big Hollywood blockbusters like The Batman are made for budgets of around $200 million, it's fascinating that crowdfunded fan films like Batman Dying Was Easy can be made by over 1,000 fans who have provided over $35,000. If Hollywood has taught us anything, it's that people will never get tired of Batman films. Crowdfunding is definitely the future. If you're interested, just know that successful crowdfunding campaigns have raised well over $28,000 on average.